weekdays 3 to 7 on CJAD 800. Dr. Jeremy Voix is a mechanical engineering professor at the École de Technologie Supérieure at ETS here in Montreal. And uh, some folks there have come up with a rather interesting idea on how to harness energy from our own bodies. Uh, Dr. Voix, first of all, uh, what sort of project was this set out to be at the end of the day to see if we could actually at one point draw enough power to really do something serious? <laughs> Yeah, hello, Aaron. This is a very good question. So actually, you know, our quest uh, for energy uh, came from the fact that we are designing here at ETS uh, in partnership, actually, with a, a local company in Montreal uh, called Sonomax. We are designing some advanced uh, hearing protection devices. So typically a kind of digital earplug, a wearable, right, that you would put inside your ear and that would protect you from the toxic noise, you know, when you're in the, at the factory and let all the uh, useful signal get through. So that could be used uh, in occupational settings and that could be used as well in leisure, you know, for recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a rock concert, you can just play that down, you know, turn down the the level and enjoy the the music uh, with that kind of uh, device. And so what happened uh, typically is that a few years back, we realized that we wanted this thing to be really miniaturized, very small in the ear canal. And then that we would, you know, eventually run into exactly the same problem as a hearing aid user do have uh, nowadays. Uh, you may realize that hearing aid users have a very small, you know, uh, in-ear device that uh, carry on a very, very small batteries. And unfortunately, they have to recharge or to actually change those batteries uh, every, um, every week or even more often. And so that's, you know, every four days, uh, two batteries that you have to change. And those batteries are very, very small. So it's, it's a pain for the people that, right. you know, don't have necessarily the dexterity. It's obviously a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, costly uh, replacements. And it's obviously a lot of waste and uh, landfill. Uh, I see. Okay. So that's a little bit of the motivation. How could we harvest uh, energy uh, close to the ear? So you come up with this idea for a chin strap. Uh, that you would wear, and basically as you chew, you create a little bit of power. Now, I know we're not creating a a whole lot of power here, but this is pretty exciting just from the sense that you could actually generate anything from it, right? Yeah, well, that's it, and this is really uh, what we call a proof of concept. So this is really just to show that that's feasible. And uh, what we realize is that when we are uh, exactly chewing, you know, uh, moving our jaws just because we are having our meals or because we are chewing gum right. or because we are speaking, um, there is definitely a huge movement in this uh, jaw joint, uh, we call that region. So if you place your little finger at the entrance of the ear canal, you may feel that by opening the and closing the mouth, you can feel that there is huge pressure and huge displacement. And that is what we uh, harvested first with that uh, earplug I described. So we actually equipped the earplug with what we call piezoelectric materials. So they are, you know, materials that are uh, generating some power when they are put under constraint, under stress. They do generate some uh, charges, electrical charges that you can use uh, to create some voltage uh, to recharge, for example, a, a battery. That's so that was the, the first case we used. Yeah. And, and, and then we came up with realizing that actually, you know, when you're opening the jaw, you do have the chin that comes down, right? And there are many, mm-hmm. many people that do have actually, uh, are, are already wearing some headgear. And you can think of uh, people like, you know, first responders, you know, uh, firemen, mm-hmm. uh, police officers, maybe uh, certainly some armed forces, military people do have that. But in some, you know, occupational settings, too, you do have miners that do have those hard hats and uh, a lot of industries, actually. And so... Since they do have actually the need for the um, earpiece I mentioned earlier, and we need to harvest energy, and they already have a strap under the chin, a chin strap, we said, well, why don't we use that piezoelectric materials inside the chin strap? And uh, every time the, uh, the speaker would be actually moving his jaw, we would actually you know, stress that uh, band, that electrical band, and that would generate some electricity. So that was the, the idea. You know, I'm just thinking now, for a radio show talk host, this could be a huge <laughs> boon. I mean, I'm here for four hours yapping all day. So, you know, a miner's just yelling every now and then. But I could be a huge source of power. You could be, and I think, you know, in in near future, this is what we will see because, you know, all those wearables are very nice and, you know, what's uh, here a watch and here some glasses, and this is very cool, but when you realize, you know, how much cables and power supplies and a docking station we carry on around, you know, you really wish that those devices would be self-sustainable, able to harvest the energy locally when where where they're actually positioned. Is the idea, too, that you could store this power if you wanted to? 
So we could, but actually, it's actually simpler since it's available. It's actually simpler to actually use it. I so see. our idea is to supplement any kind of battery that would be there, and there would be probably already a rechargeable battery. But everything that you can harvest, you know, is something you don't have to expand. So that's the our idea. I think this is a great idea. How far away till we have something like this actually come out and be usable? Well, you know, uh, we are academics, so basically what we do is really develop those kind of uh, technologies, and then we bring them to some partners, and right. Sonomax is one, but obviously um, uh, going to the you know end user and to the real players in these markets, so they could be you know, uh, in the hearing aid industry, they could be in the consumer market. Yeah, but know, even a pacemaker, right? That runs on a battery, does it not? A pacemaker in your heart? It could, except that we want things to be local. So I guess you don't, you don't want to have wires, you know, coming oh, yeah. down the chin. Doing, well, you'll have to work on a wireless one. That's the next the next step. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah, that, that's true. But get you know, a Bluetooth chin strap. <laughs> there are so many things that we could already power on the on, you know near the head because you have obviously yeah. the ears, you have the eye, you have a lot of. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing just to think that you could things. actually do this. I'm I'm uh, I'm floored that you know this is incredible technology and it's being developed right here. Doctor Voix, thank you very very much. I appreciate your time this afternoon. You're very welcome. And best of if you leave. If you need a test subject, you know, to do four hours at a time of testing, please let me know. I wonder if you're not an outlier in this. No, no, no. Well, there's lots of us. <laughs> I think this would be okay. Excellent. We'd Thank all be you. happy to do this. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dad. Dr. Jeremy Voix, mechanical engineering professor at the ETS here in Montreal on the self-generating chin strap power supply thing. Listen to the Aaron Rand Show live weekdays 3 till 7 on CJAD 800 and at CJAD.com.